Hello people, right back to this then, Cole's Mobile Crane, I believe we're on session 11 and this is the long version which will do for about an hour. Um, and where we are, cracking straight on into it, we're about to, it's about to get interesting struck complicated depending on your, your view of these things I suppose. Um, or, or hard, I'm hoping not harder than I can do. Uh, we're about to build all the machinery all the gubbins onto this base that we constructed last time round i have taken it off away from the um the chassis and the and the wheels and so forth i separated them before i got onto this because no point fighting with the entire thing so um so here we are now i am very fortunate that Stephen Terrell posted on the rust bucket posted a whole load of pictures of how this next lot's supposed to go because to be frank, I don't think I could work it out by myself from scratch, so it's going to be really helpful having these photos. And to begin with, show you this. What we've got to do is put that little beauty across the uh, across there to form part of the steering mechanism. I think um, could be wrong, but no, no, not steering. And drive, drive. That's it. It's the drive mechanism. Let's have a look. The forward and reverse drive to the road road wheels is made by fitting a six and a half inch axle through the one inch by one inch angle brackets and fixing a collar, an half inch pinion and a half inch by three quarter inch pinion between the lugs. Each lug is a fish plate body took to form an owl returning bearing. A one inch gear wheel is fitted to the front of the axle and the pinion is adjusted for a sliding mesh of the contract. So that's what we're about to do first. Now I've pulled some of those pieces together to begin with. So we'll start off by uh, sticking these fish plates on for the oil retaining bearing. I've not done that before. I'm not quite sure what an oil retaining bearing is or how it's supposed to work. But looking at the pictures, well, let's just do it and see what happens. So uh, stick these. Here, yeah, we'll be on the outside looking at this. Stephen, if by any mischance you're one of the guys watching this, thank you very much for posting these photos. It makes life so much easier for me. And straight away, what have I done? Oh, there's, my, uh, there's my screwdriver. I may make it a rule that I'm not doing any big um, models unless Stephen's done them first and put pictures upon on the forum. Don't know. We'll see. Long way to go on this anyway. We're um, just coming at the bottom of page four of the instructions and there's 14 pages in total. So grow old along with me. The best is yet to be. Well, that. Uh, Come on. Come on, Come on, Andrew. Sometimes you can't even do the simplest things. Come on. It's supposed to be an easy start, not why you're not easy, easy starting. There we go, we got it. Let's make sure that's somewhat in line by putting him in and then tightening it like that. That's that one in line. I mean, the cut, it's calling it an oil retaining bearing, so I presume if you bob some oil in there, it it hangs around better because of this um, arrangement, I think. My lack of engineering knowledge showing through there, I'm afraid. But it is what it is. This is partly why I do this, to, to learn about this sort of thing. Now, I'm going with the overhead uh, tripod view for this, because I think a little bit of experimentation, that's what shows you best what I'm doing. I've got my... My close-up camera there ready if I feel that that's a 
necessary but I think this overhead view might just make that close up one a little bit redundant but we'll see how it goes again just keep it in place while I tighten the uh, rest of them up right that's me uh, oil retaining bearing then and presumably shall we lubricate that all I've got here WD-40 but it's uh, silicon because that doesn't leave a residue that um, mucks up your parts and clogs up the works eventually or so I'm told so anyway if that's supposed to be there for a bearing we'll give it a if it's supposed to be oil retaining we'll give it some oil to retain there you go a bit of lubrication all right let's have a look at this picture So, through here, uh, fixing a collar, might be that, an half inch pinion, and half inch by three quarter pinion between the logs. Which I think is that. Otherwise, oh, is that going to be? Yeah, I think so. Although Stephen's picture looks like he possibly used a different size, but let's uh, let's see how that looks when we put it through. Is that going to mesh all right with the? Uh... No, it's not. No, it's not. Pinch my three quarters. Wrong ones, Andrew. I think, I think it's this one. Yeah, it's me who's not reading properly. Yeah, that's going to be more like it. Yeah, that's, that's meshing lovely then. So, and then a gear lever. So let's uh, let's tighten these in place. That's the collar, pinion, and then gear wheel. I'll do. This at the end of this. So tighten that up. Fix that so it's nicely meshing with that. And there you go. We we have a, a drive that's meshing lovely with that concrete. Look at that. Oh. Hmm. Presumably, I would have said that. Colour uh, uh, and the pinion is adjusted for a sliding method of the contract. There's nothing keeping that in there yet. Just let's have a look and see if the swap pool. Because I would have thought that that needs something other side of that to keep that in um, so that that isn't happening when out of mesh. Let's have a look at the actual pictures with the model. Sorry for mark your face Stephen, I just want to check up on that. If I can see you. see any pictures but I've got the uh, drawings so let's have a look at the drawings and see this uh, if I can make a detail of them 
D4 and D5. Hmm. That's not showing it on that one, not really. And that's not really showing it on that, I don't think. Well, I'm not sure about that, but we'll trust Stephen for the time here. I'll always bubble colour on there later on if he needs to keep it in place, but I'm going to presume that eventually something else will come in to, to make that work. Right, the main frame. The real frame is a massive airframe to support the jib, but the mall uses fat plates for practical reasons. What the five and a half inch by two and a half inch flat plate? Get one of those in. Just another measure. Is that right or is that too big? Oh, just a little bit. All right, five and a half inch by two and a half inch. Vertically to the inner flange of the 12 inch angle girder, 8 holes from the front with a 4.5 inch angle girder along its inside front edge. Let's find a 4.5 inch angle girder first of all. Now then, I'm presuming that that's this that we're talking about. In which case, if we do it like that, well, that's too big for that, surely. Um, vertically to the inner flange of the engine, eight holes from the front. Is that the front? Looking at that. So look at the other ones there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That is a one. You're calling that the front, is that? See, I don't. That comes round. I'm just oh hang on a second. Vertically to the nails from the front. What's it mean by the front? Is the front that bit all that? Does it tell me again in the instructions here what it's meaning by the front? Because Just uh, bear with me, I appreciate the lack of talk isn't the most interesting thing we're going to hear today, but it's not 
100% convinced by that. Hmm. Okay, now that front is, is down there by the look of this. So what does it mean then? Right, Stephen, you're a cleverer man than me. We'll take it on the basis of what you've done. So that's going to be... Then, going from here... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... One, that's going to stick out like that. It's going to go in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. At that point, there, like that. That's going in, yeah, right over the top of, of there. Right, okay, fine, fine. Let's, uh, oh, that one there. See, I'm not at all thrilled with this. I don't think my diagram ties in well. So getting that to actually, that's uh, well, these on like that. I think I see. I think. Oh, come on. Fiddly bloody. Too fiddly for my fingers. watching at this point then you, you're pretty committed to this you're pretty committed or you need to be committed one or not other but I know that not all of you are subscribed so if you're still watching at this point just go and tap on that subscribe button for me It'd make me very pleased it would and I do know that not all of you are for some strange reason so go and do that thank you Right. I think 
eventually these are there's going to be various these holes are going to act as bearings for various axles coming through I think or maybe that's the other way around but anyway it's the start of the construction and that looks about right so along its inside front edge okay well yeah it's not what it's got on the drawing but looks right a vertical four and a half inch times two inch flat plate and a horizontal five and an inch to three and three and a half flat plate flat plate wow big big plates if I would have my three and a half, is that you? These are a bit marked up. Not my finest uh, bit of Meccano, but we'll do the job. There's a five and a half by three and a half. And what else do we need? Four and a half by two and a half last time. Get the four and a half by two and a half out from the other stump. So there we go. And I did join with a three inch strip along the top edge. Right, so three inch strip, that's that's six holes or seven holes. Six holes. So, just looking at the drawing, that's going on towards there. So, put you in first of all. Now, you're just looking over, and you've got a reasonably decent view from that camera at that. Oh, dearie me, dearie dearie me, not your fault that one really. There we go, that's better. Actually, that'll need strapping together because it's not quite as. But it doesn't say to do that with those, as you it's talking about. You do that like that one, so. Let's put those in and then we'll strap that together. And then I presume you do the same along the other side. Do 
Deary me. I'm reasonably pleased with how this is turning out so far. I don't think we've made any major mistakes so far. I think it's, uh, I mean, this is famous last words and that, but so far at least, I think we're going to plan. I don't think we're going to need to go back three pages and start taking stuff to bits and whatnot. It seems to, from what I can see, work as it should do. So that's always a bonus. And, and I'm probably counting some chickens here before they hatch, but. Aside from Mama Carmel being a lot scruffier than uh, the ones in the pictures, it all appears to be in the right place and working as it should. So I'll take that. Because I'm a lot more interested in the things working than I am in them looking pretty. I mean, pretty is bonus, I've no doubt about it, but the main thing for me is that they work. And if you're aiming for realism, I suppose a, a mobile crane kicking around the site gets knocked about fairly quickly and, um, you know, doesn't steer the prettiest thing in the world. So somewhat with a bit of rust and scrapings and whatnot, it's probably more akin to the real world than something that's totally painted up nice. Right, and then this strapping them together. When Frank Ormby first designed his, his first sets with the sort of fairly small cranes and stuff, I wonder if he realised quite how complex these machines would get to be eventually. Because this is a hell of a lot more complicated than the uh, first patent, patent picture of a crane that wanted. And I think the first sets were a lot smaller than the set 10 as well, so... I wonder just how much beyond his imagination some of these machines are. Probably not a large, so I think the guy had a lot of foresight, obviously, and looked towards stuff like this. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have tightened that before I got these ones in. So I'll just loosen that off a little bit. There we go. That lets that in. Now you see, that makes them nice and in line. And I'm thinking. It might be best if that one and that one were joined with a similar strap, but it doesn't show that on the plans, and um, I don't want to put these in and find that the nuts are fouled in a mechanism later on down the line, so we'll just see how that goes. The left side five and a half inch times two and a half inch flat plate. He joins the four and a half times two and a half inch flat plate. Okay. Hang on a second. Let's read that again just so I can. Um... I really can find. 
the left side five and a half inch dent is joined to the four and a half inch by two and a half. Oh, you know, no, it is joined with a two and a half inch double angle strip. Fitted double angle strip. Fitted inside, four holes down and two holes in. So, hang on a second, let's get a double angle strip. Two and a half inch double angle strip fitted four holes down and three holes in. That'll be great, come on. I need a picture. Come on, come on, Stephen, help me out. Show me a picture of what, what this means because I'm struggling to. Let's read it out to you. Um, the left side, five and a half inch by two and a half inch flat plate, that'll be that one, is joined to the four and a half inch times two and a half inch flat plate with a two and a half inch. So that's the joint down to that one with that, with a two and a half inch angle strip fitted four rolls down and three rolls in. But four rolls down and three rolls in what? What we threw second and fifth holes nuts on the outside and the drawing is not really that helpful in explaining that is it no no it's not not really all right have you got a picture here Stephen, somewhere that'll help me with this oh and your strap is on the inside as well hmm Oh, oh, there you are. I see. He said, thinking he sees. Just looking at this picture here, Stephen's working, and I'm thinking we're talking about this. It's eventually going to hold that pinion, in which case, we're inside here. And it's one, two, three, four down. And free into that, so that will be like about there. And free into that. But pointing outwards. So there, like that. Okay. Well, if that's what it is. Second and fifth nuts on the outside. Fitted. Nuts on the outside. I'm seeing this like this. I could be entirely wrong. Could be entirely wrong. Now we're boasting we haven't got anything wrong up to press with this about five minutes ago. This is where things could rapidly go wrong because well it's a good job I've got pictures from Stephen to, to do it, standing on the shoulders of giants and all that. Oh deary me. Come on. Yeah. 
So Skeg X is coming up um, in a month or so, which I've never been to before. Now I just got into Meccano just before the pandemic hit and that cancelled the Skeg X, uh, Skeg X convention for a couple of years. So I'm very much hoping to get down to Skegness for one of the days and take a wander around because I feel it's an experience that I have to have. So if any of you watching this are, are liable to be at that and you see me mooching around, feel free to come and say hello. The right side. Which one's left side, which one's right side? Hang on a second, have I? Oh, oh Andrew, I've got a horrible feeling. That you've been a silly bugger. Just looking at this, I've put that one on the wrong one. So this here doesn't need that mechanism, does it? It's joined. Hmm. Right, so this one, that's just a normal strip. When we get to the other side that we uh there, there'll be somewhere in these instructions where it tells you which one the left and right hand side is but i'm going through steven's pictures at the moment uh, that's a screw gone missing never to be found again or it'll be found when i stand on it and swear him will We'll come from there, I'm sure. Or it'll go up vacuum clean or something like that. Not that I have a vacuum, but Mrs. might decide to have a, a funny turn and do something in here. So. So this appears to be the left side. Just looking from the pictures there, if we're looking at from there, then I'm doing the left side. So this needs to be two and a half inch strip. Fit it inside, four rolls down and two rolls in. Draws one, three, and five. So, so yeah. So I like that basically. And it is here just to straighten up all this. Um, Yeah, and you're duplicating this on the other side apart from needing to. So that with our temperature conference, I think you're duplicating it apart from differences in the fittings, i.e. this angle bracket.
Sometimes I seem to lose all coordination. I'm just trying to put a simple nut and bolt together and uh, there you go. Yeah, done this, and then we'll do the mirror image on the other side, apart from the uh, triangle. And then we build this up on the other side the same. So get those parts out. So far we haven't really hit the complicated bit of this when we start putting gears and stuff together. I presume we'll probably get that to next time round once we've because I've got a feeling we'll just make this framework up and that'll probably take me to end the time for today. And then after that, next time round, we come to uh, doing the more complicated stuff. Oh, that's my guess anyway. This lot should go together a bit quicker than the other side now that I've got half an idea what I'm doing. Decent view. Can I zoom in anymore with that? Or is that zoomed in as far as it'll go? Just so you can. Can't really see, can you? And it's on a tripod, so I can't. Bear with me. A bit more zoomed in, but not. Mind you, there's not a right lot to really show you on a zoomed in basis, so we'll, we'll live with that. It's like six or seven weeks since I last did one of these, which I'm, I'm sorry about the uh, delay between them. I know some people do look forward to these, um, but I don't like to totally swamp the channel in, in these. I mean, I could do one every week and it'd be 60 or 70% of me output in terms of videos. And whilst I enjoy doing them, I don't want it to, to look like that. I put people off who aren't particularly into these. So... But I should be doing a little bit more often than, than this has been, to be fair. I've said that before, though. It doesn't always come to fruition. But we'll, we'll try and do it a little bit more frequently. Anyway, one, two, three, four, five, six... That again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, let's start back up that way. It's got to be something like, can't it? Yeah, 
That's about right. Excuse me. Come on, come on, you bulky thing. <sighs> Let's do it as I should be doing it anyway. <sighs> There you go. These are quite useful, these modern spanners, if you haven't used them, where they've got this little bit that will actually hold the nuts better than the old fashioned stuff did, anyway. I've just got to remember to use it half the time. So bad. Then next to that we have you. Andrew, what were you just saying about using your equipment the right way? Honestly, if you had brains, you'd be dangerous, eh? Good. Now we have this one. Couple for that.
Right, I was just going to say, you'll forget to put your spanner on the right way again, but it's caught easy that time around, so I'll let myself off. Deary me. Strip, that's you. And two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Get those in and we'll tighten them up a little bit once they're properly uh, fitted. Come on. I hope you all had a, a good Easter. Weather seems to be taking a, a turn for the better, at least in my little part of the world. Hopefully summer's here and we've got the snows out of the way. I appreciate it. I don't know where everybody else is who's watching this. You might be in a place where that's not the case at all. But for this little piece of England, hopefully we had some decent sun. Cause I'm a summer person, I really, I'm not keen on winter at all. Should fly south when it gets uh, snowy. Go on, in you go. Alright, let's uh... Tighten these up. Just 
jolly good. And now this is where we do the bit outside for this. Just looking at me, me pictures. So like that. Because eventually you're going to put a bevel gear in between that there. So oh, bugger and dam. Two and five. Oh, Andrew, stop throwing the things at it. What's on the outside? Yep, nuts on the outside. That's a fair description of me, a fair few McGowan men. Right, there we are. I think we'll call that quits at that for that one. Just about on the hours worth there, and uh, and yeah, there we go. Getting ready for exciting things to happen with axles and gears and so forth down the line. But but that's where we are just at the minute. So good stuff. Thanks very much for watching along, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.